take a trip to 1876 when an important fight happened on the shores of Montana's Little Bighorn River, marking a big event known as the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Leading the charge were U.S. soldiers, with Lieutenant Colonel George A. Custer at the helm, facing off against Native American tribes like the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne, led by Sitting Bull. But this wasn't just any old fight. It was a clash fueled by long-standing tensions between the U.S. government and Native Americans over who owned the land. After the dust settled, people wondered, what caused all this tension? How did Custer's decision affect what happened? And what did Sitting Bull do to rally the tribes against the incoming forces? It's a close look at a time that changed Native American history where promises were broken, friends turned into enemies, and freedom was fiercely protected. Back in 1876, there was a big fight called the Battle of the Little Bighorn. It happened at the Little Bighorn River in Montana, USA. On one side were the U.S. soldiers, led by Lieutenant Colonel George A. Custer. On the other side were Native American tribes like the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne, led by Sitting Bull. Custer and all his men were murdered in the battle. About 50 of Sitting Bull's followers also died. Before the fight, there were a lot of problems between the U.S. government and Native Americans. The government promised certain lands to the Lakota and Dakota Sioux, but white miners were moving in and taking over. The government told the Native Americans to go back to their reservations, but many didn't want to leave their land. This disagreement led to the battle. In spite of the government's warnings, groups of Lakota and Northern Cheyenne Native Americans who didn't want to stay on reservations joined together under Sitting Bull's leadership. He was a Lakota leader who wanted to resist the U.S. expanding into their land. When spring of 1876 came around and it was hunting season, even more Native Americans left their reservations to join Sitting Bull. They all camped together by the Little Bighorn River in southern Montana Territory by the end of June. Before this, many of them got together to celebrate the Sundance Ceremony. During this, Sitting Bull had a vision of soldiers falling upside down in his camp which he thought meant they would win a big victory. That spring, following orders from Lieutenant General Philip Sheridan, three groups of army soldiers moved toward Lakota land to try to control the rebellious Native American groups. One group, led by Colonel John Gibbon, came from Fort Ellis near Bozeman, Montana, heading east. Another group, under General George Cook's command, came from the south, starting at Fort Fetterman in Wyoming Territory. Then, on May 17th, Brigadier General Alfred H. Terry led a group from Fort Abraham Lincoln, mainly made up of Custer's 7th Cavalry. On June 22nd, Terry sent Custer and his cavalry to follow Sitting Bull's trail, which led to the Little Bighorn Valley. Terry's plan was for Custer to attack the Lakota and Cheyenne from the south and push them toward another group of soldiers stationed farther up the Little Bighorn River. By June 25th, Custer's scouts had found where Sitting Bull's village was. Custer wanted to move his troops into a position where they could attack the village at dawn the next day. When some Native American warriors spotted a few soldiers from the 7th Cavalry, Custer thought they might run back to warn their village, causing the people there to scatter. Custer decided to attack right away. At noon on June 25th, he split his group into three parts to try to catch Sitting Bull's followers. He sent Major Marcus A. Reno with three companies to go straight into the village. He sent Captain Frederick W. Benteen with three companies to the south to block off any Native Americans trying to escape that way. Custer himself led five companies to attack the village from the north, but this plan didn't work out well. By breaking up his group, Custer left them unable to help each other. During the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Custer and his soldiers faced a lot of surprises. They thought there were about 800 warriors, but it turned out that there were around 2,000 Sioux and Cheyenne fighters. Many of them had better guns, and all of them were ready to protect their families. Native American stories about the battle praised the brave actions of the leaders like Crazy Horse from the Oglala Lakota tribe. Other Native American leaders also showed bravery and smart tactics. Be the first to know about our upcoming content. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now let's proceed with the battle. The soldiers who followed Custer up to the northern part of the village got surrounded by the Native Americans. All 210 of them were murdered in a big fight that might have gone on for about two hours. It ended with the soldiers defending a high area past the village, which later got called Custer's Last Stand. 
people have tried to figure out exactly what happened during Custer's fight using stories from Native Americans who were there and studied things like old bullets and bones found in the area. But even with all of that, there's still a lot we don't know for sure about this famous part of the battle, and people still talk about it in different ways. Meanwhile, on a hill at the other end of the valley, Reno's group, along with Ben Teen's group, held off the Native Americans attacking them until the next day. After that, the Native Americans stopped their attack and left. Only one horse from Custer's group survived, a horse named Comanche. Comanche was badly hurt, but it lived. For a long time, Comanche would show up in parades held by the 7th Cavalry with no rider but all dressed up. The battle was a big shock to white Americans and they sent more troops to the area to make the Native Americans surrender. Today, there's a place called Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument created in 1946 and a Native American memorial from 2003 to remember the battle. Now, here's some data about the Plains Wars along with the backstory of why this battle intensified. More people moved in and taking over land, especially after the Homestead Act of 1862, brought back tensions in the area. In 1862, some Sioux groups in Minnesota fought against settlers who were moving onto the land they believed belonged to them, even though it had been given to the United States in earlier agreements. By the end of the fighting, about 400 settlers, 70 U.S. soldiers, and 30 Sioux had died. Over 300 Sioux men were sentenced to death, but President Abraham Lincoln changed most of these sentences. After that, relations between the Native Americans who moved around a lot and the United States got a lot worse. Both sides did terrible things to each other. For example, in 1864, the Colorado militia attacked a Cheyenne village in the Sand Creek Massacre, murdering between 150 and 500 people, many of them women and kids. Then, in 1866, Teton warriors killed all 80 U.S. soldiers in the Fetterman Massacre, and in 1868, George Armstrong Custer and his soldiers murdered about 103 Cheyenne in the Washita River Massacre. With so many fights during this time, some historians call it the Indian Wars or Plains Wars. During this time, the settled tribes mostly supported the United States, with many of their young men working as scouts for the U.S. Army. This helped them protect themselves and they suffered fewer losses compared to the nomadic tribes. The nomads had only been on the plains for a short time and were often seen as invaders by the settled tribes. While some nomadic and settled groups had trade relationships, they usually considered each other as enemies. By teaming up with the United States, tribes like the Arikara, Hadatsa, Mandan, and Pawnee could fight their traditional enemies without breaking the Fort Laramie Treaty. Many leaders of settled tribes thought that working with the United States was the best way to keep their land safe. This made some settlers give up and leave. A new treaty in 1868 aimed to bring peace again, but in 1874, the United States broke it, leading to more conflict when gold was found in the Black Hills. Eventually, several Sioux and Cheyenne bands joined together and defeated Custer and his 7th Cavalry at the Battle of the Little Bighorn in 1876. Since it was tough and expensive to fight guerrilla fighters defending their homes, U.S. policymakers decided to destroy the food supply of the indigenous people. Buffalo hunting was already happening a lot, and as the buffalo disappeared, the Plains Native Americans started to starve. By the early 1880s, most tribes had to live on reservations. Hey people, are you satisfied with our content? Your feedback is important, so share your thoughts in the comments below.